Have you been diagnosed with an incurable disease? Are you fighting against one sickness after another? Are you struggling with thoughts to give up the fight and die? Maybe it's more than the sickness and disease that you are fighting against. We're going to talk more about this in a little bit. Get ready to learn about healing, how to activate your faith, see your miracle, and keep your healing. Understand how to accurately use the prophetic and healing power of your words to create your miracle. Discover what the Bible says today on Empowered for Healing and Miracles with Becky Dvorak, as together we fulfill the Great Commission with God's healing power. Hi, this is Becky Dvorak, and I welcome you to Empowered for Healing and Miracles. Are you struggling with an incurable disease? Are you struggling to get free from it? No matter what you do, it just seems like nothing is working and, and you're at the point where you just want to give up and die? Are you struggling with thoughts of suicide? How about other things such as murder and terroristic thoughts? Are you struggling with thoughts to abort your baby? Are you being pressured by someone else to abort your child? Are you struggling to get free from drug addictions and past addictions? And no matter what you do, you just keep falling back to it. Well, maybe you're dealing with something more than the sickness, the disease, or the problem. Maybe there's something actually coming against you, such as a spirit of death. And I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart that is what it is, a spirit of death. Because as we study the Word of God, we see that sickness and disease, they're weapons of Satan to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. And so it really isn't the sickness and disease coming against you. It is something behind it that's using these weapons of sickness, to, sickness and disease and these other issues. And so with this spirit of, of death, you have authority over it. Why? Number one, because God gave you authority. He gave you authority over, over Satan and all of his wicked works, regardless of what he's, of how this spirit of death is attacking you. You have authority over it, and it's time to get free from it. It's time to get free from sickness and disease. God does not want you bound, bound up like Lazarus was with that cloth that covered his, his body. Remember when Jesus raised him from the dead and, and he said to them after he called Lazarus to come forth and he rose up from the dead and he commanded them, the people around to unbind him from, from that grave cloth. They said, unbind him unbind him. And so they had to remove that cloth, that cloth of death, that gra those grave clothes. And I believe some of you need to remove those grave clothes today. God doesn't want you bound by a spirit of death. He doesn't. He wants you delivered and set free from it, no matter what form it takes. I remember being on the mission field for 25 years in Guatemala. And from the get-go, my family came down with typhoid. But for me, it just kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And I knew that God healed, but I didn't know what I know today. I certainly didn't know what I'm teaching you today. It's come with a lot of years of experience and, and helping people to get free from sickness and disease. And so what I'm sharing with you, God wants you delivered. He wants you to unbind that, those grave clothes. He doesn't want you bound to that spirit of death. And you know what? Neither do you. And so it's time to get free. Get free. And you know what? The truth sets us free. That's God's word. He says the truth will set you free. And I believe what I'm teaching you today will free you. It will deliver you. It will set you free from these vicious attacks of Satan. Because sickness and disease, they do not come from God. It comes from the pit of hell. It comes from Satan. 
and God wants you free. It's time for God's people to get delivered and free. It's time to be healed and, and, and be strengthened. And not only to get free from this spirit of death, but to overcome it and, and to walk in divine health. But first, we have to be delivered from that spirit of death. And I remember being on the mission field. And like I said, my family got attacked from the beginning with, with typhoid. But typhoid is one of those reoccurring diseases and it, and it lingers in the body and it'll pop up any time in your life. And, and each time it seems to get worse and worse. It surely did for me. It didn't affect the rest of my family in that way, but it affected me. And like I said, I didn't know what was really going on. I thought it was typhoid. And that was the weapon that Satan was using. But there was something more to it. And I remember, I remember being in the fourth level. That's the highest level of typhoid. And death was all over me. I'm telling you, I was so weak. I was so weakened by it. Everything was coming out of me any way that it could. And it, it, it drains you. It totally drains. It depletes your body. And, and I remember just being so sick, high fevers, and my body was so aching with pain. Just every muscle, everything just hurt so bad within me. And, and I remember one afternoon, it was a sunny afternoon, and I was laying in bed sicker than sick. And I remember asking God, I'm almost ashamed to say it, but I did. And I think it will set some of you free. I asked God to take me home. I said, please, God, take me home. I can't live like this. And when I said that to him, when I made that request of God, I heard the Spirit of God say to me, get up, get out of bed and get dressed. And I tried with all my might to lift my head off that pillow. But I'm telling you, I didn't have the strength. And my head fell back into my pillow. And, and I wasn't giving up. I just couldn't get myself out of that bed. There was nothing in me. And I heard him say again, get up. Get out of bed and get dressed. So I tried for the second time. And, and again, I couldn't get my body out of bed. You know, the first time God said it to me, it was in the form of a rebuke because I asked him to take me home of all things. Can you imagine that with what I walk in today? Of course, the enemy was using using this typhoid against me to bring me out of this world to prevent me from from fulfilling my destiny, which is it to be a healing evangelist and to help people get free from the curse of the enemy in this situation with sickness and disease. And so I heard him say for the third time, you know, and when God repeats something to you, it, it means something. I mean, he's serious. And this time it was like a cheering on, like you can do it. You can do it. And I know God is saying the same to you. And he said to me, get up, get out of bed and get dressed. And the only thing I could do, because I couldn't seem to lift myself up, I just let myself slide on the floor in a big lump, telling it was not graceful. It was not ladylike at all. But I got out of that bed and I was obeying him no matter how ungraceful it looked. And so I crawled over to that dresser and I got myself dressed. It took a long time, but I did it. And then I pulled myself up in that doorway, which was even harder, but I did it. And I walked down the long corridor of, of the children's home that we were living in towards the kitchen. And, and with every step, I got stronger and stronger. And I can tell you, I never dealt with one symptom ever again, and I never will, of typhoid. I was delivered and I was healed from it. And I share this with you, this testimony with you to help you. And we're going to continue on and speak about this right after these important messages, I'm going to teach you how to get free from this spirit of death, to conquer this spirit of death attacking you. We'll be right back. Get Becky Dvorak's book, Conquering the Spirit of Death. 
The spirit of death, it's a demon, it's a deadly demon, and it's, and it's out to steal, to kill, and to destroy us. Through this book, you will understand how to experience and enforce the resurrection power of Jesus. Come into agreement with the spirit of life. Understand that you were created to win. Discover how to use the weapons of warfare that God has equipped you with. Understand how to prophesy life over yourself. Find out how to speak healing into every situation. Learn how to resurrect dreams that God has placed on your heart. Every chapter of the book ends with questions to help you digest the teaching and powerful prayers to help you implement God's blessings and promises for your life. It's very important that I equip you and teach you how to overcome the spirit of death in these last days so that you can win. Log on to authorbeckydvorak.com to find this and many more great products. Welcome back. We are talking about conquering the spirit of death. And as I shared with you, the sickness and the disease may not be the problem. And in fact, I don't believe it is. If it's a incurable disease, a reoccurring sickness and disease, or you are struggling to give up the fight and just die, or if you are if you are dealing with and, and just fighting against thoughts of suicide, murder, terroristic attacks against other people? How about wanting to, to abort your child or someone else is trying to convince you to abort your child or you are having one, it seems like one brush with death, one, one accident after another where it's almost, you almost die and it's just happening over and over and over again or you're dealing with drug addictions or very, very dangerous behaviors that you just can't seem to get free from, I believe you have a spirit of death over you and it's what's coming against you, but it's using the sickness and the disease and, and that's, its, that's its weapon of mass destruction against you. But God wants you to be delivered and free because He created you to be a conqueror. Actually, He created you to be more than a conqueror. And being more than a conqueror, if it comes when we deal with sickness and disease, would be walking in divine health and healing and strength. That's God's perfect will for His people. But we have to get free from this spirit of death that is attacking us. What is the spirit of death? I believe it's a demon. It's a very powerful demon. It's bent on upon our destruction and it takes its orders from Satan which is to steal, to kill, and to destroy us. And it uses so often sickness and disease against us to do so. But we don't have to give in to it. And you know what? There is a forerunner to the spirit of death, and it's called a spirit of fear. What does the Bible teach us? Those things that we fear the most will come upon us. We fight it off in the name of Jesus. And we fill ourselves with the promises of God concerning healing in the name of Jesus. And so this spirit of death, it's a demon and it's a very powerful one, but you've got what it takes to overcome it. You have faith. You have, you have faith-filled words. You have the promises of God to speak out over you. And you can choose to put your faith in action and live out those faith-filled promises in your life. Amen. We were ministering to uh, a young man in Guatemala, and he, he must have been around 19 years old, something like that at the time. Maybe he was a little older, but somewhere around there, a young man. And he had, he had become sick, and so and, and deathly sick, and they, his parents brought him to the hospital now. Miguel and his family are strong Christians. They're, they've been working in the church for many, many years. They're wonderful people. They love God. They have a strong witness. But something happened. And, you know, we live in a fallen world, and the enemy hates God's people. He hates us, so he uses these weapons of mass destruction against us to bring us out so that we can't fulfill our destinies. And, and that's a key factor in this. Why is the enemy coming after you? Because he fears you. He fears the eternal fruit that you are created to produce or that you are producing in your life already. 
And so he wants to take us out. And it, this was the same in the case with Miguel. Miguel was sick. They brought him to the hospital. They ran all these tests. And it was discovered that he, ha he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And, and when he told me, because we know the family, we went to church for many years together. And, and he told me, he said, Becky, when, they, when, the, when the doctor came in and told me and my family, gave me this diagnosis of pancreatic cancer and told him how bad it was and that there was no hope and they were just going to send him home for Christmas to spend his last Christmas, just spend the last little time with his family. He said to me, he said, Becky, it was as if someone gave me a drink of poison. He said, it paralyzed my voice and I couldn't even speak. Isn't that so of the enemy? Isn't that fear so of the enemy? Why do I say that? Because we have the power of life and death in our words, according to Proverbs 18, 21. And we need that power of words activated, especially in a situation like this, to overcome, to conquer that spirit of death. But that, that, that spirit of fear entered into him. That's what he really drank, that poison that he said, I felt like I drank poison. I was just fed poison and I couldn't even speak. And, 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 and that was that spirit of fear that entered into him. And I'm telling you, a spirit of fear is a forerunner to the spirit of death. Just like John the Baptist was a forerunner for Jesus, the spirit of fear is a forerunner for the spirit of death. And, and it took control of him and he, and, and, and he couldn't speak, he couldn't think, and, and, and they sent him home for Christmas to spend his last little bit of time with his family. What a Christmas gift that was. But I'm telling you, we were called over to his house and we went to him and, and that's what he told me what happened. And I said, okay, let's pray. Let's pray in the spirit. And we started praying in the spirit. And as I prayed in the spirit, the Lord gave me a vision and I saw a tall, tall um, oak tree. It was a strong oak tree. And it was, had, had, had all the leaves and the leaves were changing color and, and the leaves were beginning to fall. And I knew that that young man, it was a promise of God that he would live to be an, an old man and he would live in full health and strength. It was a promise of God. And I renounced that spirit of death in him. I renounced it. I commanded it out of him. And I released the spirit of life and the healing power of the Lord. I cursed that pancreatic cancer. Every cancerous tumor, every, every cancerous cell in his body, I commanded it out of him. And then I used the power of the words and I released that spirit of life and the power of Holy Spirit to flow in and throughout his entire body, every cell, every tissue, every organ, every system, that they would be renewed with resurrection power of Jesus in the precious name of our, of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And I just prayed it over him. And I said, now you start activating your faith. You speak faith-filled words and you act like you're going to live in the name of Jesus. And he did. And you know what? That, can that cancer was gone. That tumor or those tumors on his pancreas were gone. They were gone. They disappeared. And this man, it's been years and he's married. He has children and he's just a shining example. And he's gone on in the ministry. So this works. And God created you to be like Miguel, to be a winner. And you are more than a conqueror. And you have authority over every, every weapon that the spirit of death will use against you. And so I pray that this has just blessed you today and we will be back and I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. So don't go away, you don't wanna miss this. We'll be right back. Becky Dvorak is an author, healing evangelist, prophetess, and dynamic preacher of the gospel. Through her ministry, she spreads an infectious faith for the miraculous. 
I have witnessed the blind see, the deaf hear, the mute speak. I'm here to help you heal in Jesus' name. Becky has learned how to enforce God's supernatural power, and she wants to share that with you. For more information, go to Becky Dvorak's website and follow her on Facebook. Welcome back to Empowered for Healing and Miracles. Before I pray for you, I want to give you one more testimony. And, you know, because the spirit of death doesn't just come upon God's people or, or against people with sickness and disease. He has all kinds of tactics. And this one, I also believe, is just as important, especially for the times that we are living in, when there's just so much violence coming against innocent people. And, and my son, Joaquin, who is still in Guatemala, he and, he and his brother are running our children's home for us with their families. But I remember a couple years ago, he was riding a motorcycle out with, with some friends. And then he was coming back and his friends didn't want to come back at the same time. But he knew that he, he was supposed to be home for dinner. And, and so he knew that. And so he was driving up, and you have to understand in Guatemala, it gets, it gets dark between 6 and 6.30 all year round. And in Guatemala, people eat later than you do here in the States. But anyway, here we are. He, he's driving up the dirt road to, to where we live, and he's going up this hill. And he was borrowing someone's motorcycle, so he wasn't that experienced on it either. But anyway, he was driving up the the this big hill and a group of young men about six of them jumped him he all of a sudden he came up and and they blocked the road and he tried to back up to turn around but the sand was really soft there and and so he ended up falling plus the, it was such an incline that you know he, he couldn't it just he fell off the motorcycle and they had tied him up, and they were beating him, and they dragged him to, to the bushes. This is dealing with the spirit of death. And he thought for sure they were going to kill him. They had guns to his head, and they were beating him, cursing him, kicking him. And, and he's, you know, and, and he told me he couldn't think. He couldn't think clearly. But I'm telling you, Greater is Jesus in us than he's Satan who is in this world. And it's important for all of us to know this with all that's going on in this world today. And I believe things are just going to get worse. The attacks are going to be more vicious against, especially against God's people. But no matter the times we're living in, greater is Jesus in us than he's Satan who is in this world. And so what did Joaquin do when he was able to? He he all of a sudden called out and he said, God, help me. And, and, and you know, he was being beaten and, and cursed out and, and they were holding a gun to the back of his head and he was horrified in the natural. He was horrified and he said he couldn't think clearly. And, but he got those words out, God, help me. And you know what? God knows what's going to happen. He knows. Now, should have my son been driving at that time of night in Guatemala? No, but he was. But even then, God helped him and delivered him. It was an amazing story. He called out to God, help me. And you know, he had been tied up and thrown in the bushes. The bushes is this tall grass. Nobody knew he was there. Well, all of a sudden, another young man is driving up the same part of the road and they jump him. And, and Joaquin is left in the bushes, and no one knows he's even there. You know, they got, they got a gag over him, over his mouth, so he couldn't call out, or nobody would hear it anyway. And what was that man going to do anyway? Because they were doing the same thing to him that they were doing to my son, and what they wanted was those motorcycles. But they certainly didn't want anyone speaking, because now you would have two witnesses that would be able to testify before those police, and Joaquin knew it. And Joaquin, the way they had them tied up, he couldn't run, he couldn't, he couldn't break free from it. And so they were attacking him, and now they're attacking this other young man, and the exact same thing happens to him. 
But all of a sudden, you know, Joaquin thinks, God help me. Those were his words. That's the only thing he could get out of his mouth. God help me. And then comes a man in a car. And I believe it was of God. The timing was so perfect of God. This man in a car came up and they tried, they wanted to jump him. But the man was not going to allow that because he was in a car and he backed up the car and took off. And they knew that they had now three witnesses of them and seen them and knew what they were doing. And it frightened these people. It frightened this young gang, this young gang of men. And they were frightened. And so the other man, because the second, because the car came, that man was able to escape. And they were all like worried, what are we going to do with Joaquin? And Joaquin recognized, he was pretty sure he recognized one of them, even though he had a mask on and all that, he recognized them. And so Joaquin, I mean, they go to Joaquin and you know what they do? Why? Because we plead the blood of Jesus over us in every situation, over our family members every day. No weapon formed against us will prosper. And certainly not this one is going to prosper. No, in the name of Jesus, not one. They came up and they untied my son Joaquin in the bushes. They were apologizing to him. They got his motorcycle. They gave it back. They set him up on the motorcycle and they were so apologetic. The only thing they stole was his money, but everything else they gave away. I mean, everything else they gave back to him. And I'm telling you, he was delivered from the spirit of death. And God wants to know that you have authority and God will give you all that you have need of during these intense times that we are in. It's a spirit of death, no matter what flavor it takes. And God created you to have authority over it. His authority, the authority of Christ over Satan and all of his wicked works, no matter what it's labeled, sickness, disease, plague, a vicious attacks, whatever they are in the name of Jesus, you have authority. And that's good news. You are more than a conqueror. You are created to win over Satan every time in every situation. I want to pray for you to break off that spirit of death that is coming up against you and your family. Right now, in Jesus' name, we say no to that attack. In Jesus' name, those attacks. We say no to that spirit of death. We command you. I command you in the name of Jesus. Join your faith with me. I command it in the name of Jesus to release God's people in the name of Jesus. You get off of them in Jesus' name. We plead the blood and the power of that almighty name for his great glory. And I release that spirit of life into you and through your family in Jesus name. And we declare no weapon formed against you will prosper. No evil will come near your dwelling. Every lying tongue, every negative report set on fire against you will be silenced, exposed and brought to shame in Jesus most holy name. Amen and amen and amen.